Sairi, the Hoshiden from before Hoshido was even a thing. Sairi is a pre-promoted swordmaster, but like I've said in earlier bios, pre-promotes are in general very very good in this game, so don't worry about that. Now, as a swordmaster, you tend to end up comparing her with Long Ku, because the two of them are quite similar in some ways, but also quite different. Now, one thing that I want to mention is that Sairi, her base stats do vary a little bit based on what difficulty you're playing. They'll be slightly lower than what's displayed here on normal mode, and slightly higher on lunatic mode. But even then, now, Sairi's starting stats are good enough to the point where sometimes she can actually end up with a higher stats than Long Ku when he is at level 20 and promoted. In general, if you get unlucky with Long Ku's strength growths, which tends to happen to me quite a lot, Sairi will often have better starting strength than he will as a level 1 Swordmaster, and also, despite Sairi's luck growth being worse than his and with a minus 1 to the cap, she tends to have higher base luck than he does as a level 1 Swordmaster as well. Fire Emblem fans have a tendency to call characters with high base stats RNG proof. This means that if a character in a lower tier class got RNG screwed massively to the point where their stats are much much lower than they should be, you can often make up for it by using pre-promoted characters who have high base stats and are thus RNG proof, so they can't get screwed over by the RNG that badly because their starting stats are already quite high. Anyway, Sairi is an example of this. Of course, Sairi does have some considerable differences from Long Ku in terms of her stat growth. Now, her strength growth rate is identical, her skill and speed are 10 points lower than his, and she only has a plus 1 to those caps instead of Long Ku's plus 3. Her luck, as I already mentioned, is lower, but the main thing that sets Sairi apart from him is her defenses and HP are a lot better than his. The growths on her defense and resistance are very, very good, particularly that resistance, which is very high for a physical user, and with a plus one cap there and a very good base and resistance, Sairi can act as a pretty good mage killer. Also to note about her caps is a plus one strength modifier. Long Ku doesn't have that, his is just zero, so even though they have the same growth, Sairi will end up with higher strength than him in the end. Of course, Long Ku will be faster and probably get more critical hits due to his skill stat. Now, the other weird thing about Sairi is she has a minus one magic cap for some bizarre reason. I'm not really sure why she has this, but I guess they just had to give her another flaw, and well, they couldn't lower her defense because that was sort of one thing that she has going for her, so, um... They gave her minus one magic, which doesn't really make much of a big difference because she only has one magic using class, but I guess if you want to use magic swords, she won't hit as hard with them. Again, on the subject of those defenses though, not only are the growths quite decent and her caps alright, but remember that Long Ku has minus two to both defense and resistance caps, so yeah, she has much less of a glass cannon than he is, so if you want a more tanky sword master, then she's definitely one to use. Sairi's class options are also similar to Long Ku's, but with one notable difference. Now, she has the sword master branch, obviously, but she starts out in its promoted form. She's only level 1 though, so she hasn't learned Astro or Swordfare yet. Both of them are very good skills though, so definitely a good idea to keep her in this class uh, until she learns both of them. There's very little reason to reclass her back down to a Miramidon because she already has both skills from that class. But she can become an Assassin as well through Second Seals, and that'll give access to the, well, always amazing Lethality and Pass skills, so yeah. Assassin skills are some of the best in the game, so definitely worth it to go through that class branch. Now, like Long Ku, she also has the Wyvern Rider branch, so most of the things that I said with him apply here. Lancebreaker could be a very good skill though uh, when she's a Swordmaster, because that'll help her dodge lances more than she'd normally be weak to. Swordbreaker, I guess, is decent too if you're a fan of breaker skills. And you've also got things like uh, Quick Burn and uh, the normal Wyvern Rider skills. 
Also, Deliverer from... I think it's Deliverer, yeah, from uh, Griffin Rider, which gives you plus one to all your stats when you're uh, paired up with someone, which, seeing as you tend to be paired up all the time in this game due to how overpowered it is, definitely a useful skill to have. Now, I've held off on this class for last because this is definitely a main thing that separates Sairi from Long Ku, and this is the fact that she has the Pegasus Knight class branch. Of course, Long Ku would never be able to have this because he's a guy. Something interesting about this is that Relief and Tantivity from... Relief from Pegasus Knight, Tantivity from Wyvern Rider, both have the same activation conditions, so you can combo the two of them to get benefits at the same time, but there are usually better skills to use your skill slots on. The main benefit of this branch is access to Gale Force from Dark Flyer, which means that, yeah, Sayri will be able to, well, have Gale Force, which is always amazing. And also Rally Movement is very good too. Lance Fair on Falcon Knight is not all that useful for her, because other than the Pegasus Knight branch, the only classes that she has that uh, have access to Lancers is Wyvern Lord, so... Yeah, she hasn't really used Lancers all that much. Rally Speed, I guess, could be useful compared with Rally... I mean, combined with Rally Movement, but she doesn't really have any more Rally skills, so best to save the rallying for someone else. Overall, though, I'd say Sairi is better as a Swordmaster or Assassin because her growths as a Pegasus Knight are basically a slightly worse version of Cordelia, so better to use Cordelia as a Pegasus Knight with high strength and defense. And as a Wyvern Rider, her defense growth is not all that great, or at least nowhere near up to the standards you'd expect from that class, so I say definitely keep Sairi as a Swordmaster. She does the job of a bulky Swordmaster really well. There is one major problem with Sairi, though, and this is what probably makes Longku a bit better than her in the long run. And that is, Sairi is a member of Generation 1.5. Well, which is what I like to call it. You know what that means? Sairi has severely limited support options. I believe, apart from the Avatar, there is only one person that she can support, so... That is really bad. You know, meanwhile, Longku can support with an enormous number of characters, being a first-generation character. So, considering how good supports are in this game, Longku definitely has a major advantage over her in that department, and I mean a really major advantage. Seriously, just the number of supports that he has in comparison to hers is staggering, and that's really a major flaw of Sa of Sairi. It's, it's her lack of support options, because, yeah, just like everyone in Gen 1.5, like Anna, uh, yeah, those that lack of supports is really frustrating, and kind of hampers her ability to do well on the battlefield in a game like this that's just so big on supports. Sairi is voiced by Minae Noji, who is credited as Stacy Okada in this game. It's actually pretty cool that they got a Japanese-American to voice her, because, yeah, Sairi is pretty heavily implied to be Fire Emblem's equivalent of Japanese. Now, there actually aren't very many roles I could tell you about of hers, because she actually does mostly live-action stuff. She hasn't had very many vocal roles in games, apart from Sairi and one other character in Awakening, who, when I found out she was also this character in Awakening, I completely freaked out, because she sounds absolutely nothing like Sairi at all. But there is one more voice role that she has done in a major game, Unfortunately, it's an extremely controversial one. And that would be Mila Maxwell in Tales of Exilia. Now, I've played this game and its sequel recently, and yeah, I've heard a lot of people say Mila's voice acting in the English version is terrible, and it's contributed a lot to the character being much more disliked outside of Japan, because in Japan, Mila's actually really popular, but Western fans tend to really hate her, partly because of her voice acting. This isn't a video on that game at all, but since we're on the subject of this voice actress, I'll give my two cents on this issue. I think that the sequel, Tales of Exilia 2, completely proves that uh, Minae Noji is a good voice actor, because she also plays Alternate Dimension Mila as well as Prime Mila, and Alternate Dimension Mila sounds and acts absolutely nothing like Prime Mila, and she pulls that off really, really well. Also, Prime Mila sounds a heck of a lot better in Exilia 2 than she did in the first game, 
which leads me to believe they must have screwed up her voice directing really badly in that one, because, yeah, it is insane just how much better she sounds in the sequel, and, yeah, I admit that she does sound a little bit weird in the first game, I get the feeling that they did something similar to what they did with Other M. They told the actress to play the character as unemotional as possible, and that resulted in her sounding a bit too unemotional, to the point where she just sounded like a soulless robot, which in some ways was kind of the point, but in other ways, they did take it a little bit too far, and she does sound a lot more emotive in the sequel. And again, I'd just like to mention just, uh, how amazing it is, her ability to do both Prime Mila and Alternate Mila, because basically Prime Mila is very much uh, otherworldly and stoic, Alternate Mila is straight up Sundere, and the difference between their personalities is so major that I have to give credit to her. She is a good voice actress, they just must have screwed up the voice direction in the first game somehow. That's really the only way I can explain it. On the subject of Awakening, though, it's actually kind of hilarious that the English voice actress for Mila Maxwell is in this game, because the Japanese voice actress for Mila is the Japanese voice of the female avatar. Which voice option? All of them. And one of the male avatar voice options. And female Morgan. And she's also Camilla in Fire Emblem Fates. So, yeah, um... Miyuki Sawashiro definitely seems to be getting a lot of work in Fire Emblem lately.